I'm about to describe a different method for computing the voltage constant on a brushless outrunner motor uh, that, that I described in the last video. And I don't like this method at all because it involves running the motor at full throttle with a propeller on it and this is a lot of safety issues with that and, and you know I'm talking about doing that on the bench you know indoors. Uh, but if you think you can do that safely I guess the method is, is fine. Um, a nice thing about it is that you don't need to do the separate uh, internal resistance measurement like I described with the power resistor so you don't need to do any of that. You still need to do the no load current or the I zero measurement so, so that doesn't change but that's not too hard to do. So what you need to do is that you need to find two propellers. One of them should be the size that that goes for the motor and then the other one should be like one or two inches smaller because what, what you track what you the goal is to end up with two sets of measurements one of them where the current is a lot less than with the other one and the the reason why you need two different propellers is because you you're taking the measurements on the input to the speed control so the only way to do an accurate measurement is to do it at 100% throttle and so, so if you need two different measurements, the only way to, to get different values is to use two different propellers, okay? So, but it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, and, and you can use a regular tachometer, which is also an advantage of the method. So you, you put one propeller, you turn it on, 100% throttle, and then you measure the voltage, the current, and the RPM. And then you take the propeller out, put on the other one, and the same thing, voltage, current, and RPM. So you take those six values, and it's like, relatively complicated formula, it's actually in my first book and, and you plug all those values in and you get the internal the motor internal resistance measurement so then once you have that you can use the formula from the last video and, and both of them are on the spreadsheet that's attached to this so you know I'm not going to describe either one of them but so you take that RM value plug it into the other formula and get a KV value so it's a, it's a f relatively different way of getting there um, again, whether this method is more or less accurate than, than the last one, um, hard to say. I, I, I tend to like the other one. The, the other one is a lot safer. I think the, the, the RM computation is a lot more accurate than the other method, but the KV computation with this one might be, might be more accurate, you know, depending how you look at it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this series of videos, and until next time.